Well, hello again. Welcome to Carrie Ray and Kaylin's weekly hot takes of the financial market. And I am Carrie Ray Davis with Carrie Sells, the city in Keller Williams. And I'm Keelan Harvey with the Harvey Home Team Highlands Residential Mortgage. So Keelan, fill us in. What happened this week with the market? You know, I feel like I'm the doom and gloom guy, but I want to bring it to you guys. No doom and gloom. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, it's sad. But you know what? The market's been tough lately. And I want this important stuff. These are moving mar market movers. <laughs> and we want to make sure that you guys are up to speed with what's happening. But where there's situations like this, there's also opportunity. So I promise I'll turn it around at some point. But uh, today, Friday, October 6th, I want to be clear on that. I don't know when you're going to watch this. The BLS jobs report came out. And the BLS jobs report is the Bureau of Labor and Statistics uh, came out today. And why that's important is because the Fed really wants to know what's going on in the economy. And uh and having a good understanding of how jobs are doing is really a good indicator for the market to make some decisions. These are market moving decisions. And unfortunately, it wasn't good for rates today. Um, and the news flash. I knew flash, <laughs> another down day in the market, unfortunately. Right. Right. But uh, so the jobs came in at 336,000 new jobs. They were expecting 170. So when more jobs come in, that means the economy is too hot, not good for the bond market, not good for mortgage rates. Okay. Uh, however, there is some weird, I mean, I don't know the right word for it, but there's some funky stuff going on underneath the surface. And unfortunately, the market just takes face value. And even more unfortunately, I think the Fed takes it at very much face value as well. So if we kind of dive into this uh, a little bit, part of those 336,000 jobs, 73,000 were government jobs, which okay. they're government jobs, right? You know, it doesn't necessarily indicate anything to do with the economy per se. Mm -hmm. um, 96,000 of those jobs were hospitality and leisure. Now, I wouldn't say that hostile and leisure is the most is the best indicator for what our economy is doing. I mean, because when the economy goes down, they're probably the first to go. These are your right. servers, bartenders, you know, uh, hotels, these type of things. Yeah. Um, and often these jobs are double counted. They're part time jobs. They're really not full time jobs most of the time. Um, and actually, the hours worked were three fourths of the normal hours reported in this report, which is also an indicator of not being very strong. Right. right? And then the average earnings weekly and hourly were down. So overall, there are some things hidden within this report that would indicate that it's not as strong as they think it is. Mm -hmm. um, so and then that's kind of the big headline business survey. Another piece to that is there is the household survey and the household survey. I love this. It's like the, it's like the kid that doesn't get that much attention, but there's like, it, it <laughs> to me, it makes sense. It's right. household surveys when they actually pick up the phone and they call the houses and like, Hey, what's going on in your household with jobs, which to me is a pretty strong indicator of where we're actually at. I think there could be some funky stuff with the, with the headline jobs report, not so much with this. And that was only 86,000 jobs created. Okay. A little different than the 336,000, right? It's a big, the dump, yeah, it's a big number difference for sure. It's a big number difference. And then not only that, ADP came in at the same uh, at the same number, which I, I mean, any job that I've ever worked, everybody's had ADP. That's like the, you know, the paycheck um, software, all that, the, you know, the HR. Came so I, yeah. yeah, yeah. I would imagine they'd have a really good assessment too. And also unemployment hasn't changed at 3.8%. So, you know, we haven't seen anything there. And I mean, let's just talk about jobs in general. Jobs have been going down since, you know, for a long time. Back in 2021, you'd see 700,000 jobs at this. So, you know, to see 336 come in, it's really not that big of a deal. I feel like we're trending for, you know, uh, not for the better okay. uh, for some time now. So I think it's just the market reacting and we've made up a little bit of ground since then. Okay, good. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. Um, so I know that you look at these reports on a daily basis. And one of the things that I wanted to talk to people about today is, you know, why it's so important for you to stay in touch with your lender, because we have a current client that we're working with that you locked them last night, didn't you? I did. Yeah, that's a great example, actually. So yeah. let's um, you talk know, about that a little bit. Yeah, that's a I think that's a great example. So we have a client and um 
I don't make decisions for people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I want to make sure because I'm always the bad guy, right? If rates get worse and I'm or better than I lock you, I'm the bad guy. And if they go the other way, I'm the bad guy. So I'm really up to speed with making sure I have a conversation where I can have my customers make a decision. So last night we had a conversation um, about this BLS jobs report that's coming out today. And, you know, hey, here's the situation. BLS jobs com reports coming out. It's let me down for months now. So I didn't have huge <laughs> expectations. But if it did come back and it was lower than expectations, rates could have got much better. So, Mr. Customer, you know, I don't have great expectations. My professional opinion would be to lock, but it's up to you. We locked, and sure enough, uh, we were down 60 basis points when I woke up this morning because that report comes out at like 5.30 a.m., and so the market would have already reacted to where I have the ability to lock alone. Sure. Uh, so having uh, timing on when to lock and float and having a certified mortgage advisor like myself, mm -hmm. there's levels in this game. I nerd out on this stuff. I'm watching the candlesticks and all the data and information to really get a good understanding of, you know, I can educate my customers and what to expect when to lock the rate because that can be a lot of money uh, or a big mistake if you don't time the market correctly. Well, and it just goes to show how important it is to work with professionals that are looking out for your well-being, like Keelan and I, because, you know, Keelan and I have done a lot of transactions together, and I know that he'll call me saying, hey, I can't get a hold of so-and-so. I want to talk with them about locking their loan in because I think that things are going to change or now's the time. And so one thing that I really respect about you, Keelan, is how well of an eye you keep on the market and make sure that you're constantly watching things. So if there are any little changes that are going to happen that are going to really affect the bottom line for our clients that you're there to let them know what's going on. So they've got the information that they need in order to make a good decision. So I appreciate, you, you, I appreciate that about you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. And the reality is I do care. And I, like, okay. you know, I feel terrible if I make a bad call, you know, I feel terrible. I, I want to exceed people's expectations you know, I don't get compensated on the interest rate you get. I don't get compensated on, you know, charging you more points. I, I just want to do the best possible job I can for our customers. And so I nerd out on data reports, everything that I possibly can, because it's such an amazing feeling to call somebody and say, hey, this is the rate we talked about. But guess what? It's a quarter better or I saved you X amount of money for this reason. It's just a great conversation. It just I love to exceed expectations and you know, I look at it like it's my family. What would I do if it was me buying the house over as my family? How can I how can I make the best decisions for people? So, um, you know, and there's levels. There's people in our in our industry that don't look at any of this stuff. They'll just lock you could care less and move on. Right. And you get people that are like concerned about an eighth of a rate or a quarter of a rate it could be like 30, 40 dollars a month and then lose five or ten thousand dollars in paying points because you made a terrible decision in the marketplace. So, right. I mean, really working with somebody that knows what they're doing, you might be looking at this, but really you should be looking at that. Right. Well, and that's one thing that I think that you do for our clients is you give them a full, a full picture as to like what to be looking at. So, um, that's, yeah, that's why we're working together. So I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so just right now, so rates this week, so you, so we said earlier, we talked about this a little bit earlier. So you said they're around, you know, five, excuse me, seven to eight right now. Is that kind of where they're, where they're holding? Yeah, you're, you're probably around the high sevens right now. I mean, you can pay points to get it lower. I saw B of A, the, uh, was it um, yesterday, probably even worse today. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but it was 8% at a point, you know, okay. um, so depending on who you work with, we have very competitive rates. So, um, and I gotta be careful about talking about rates, but right. the reality is I would expect high seven somewhere around there right now, okay. but, um, people don't forget rates are high right now, but because of that, you can get a better deal on the house. And we talked about buy downs in a right. previous video. So if you didn't check that out, go to one of our previous videos. Was it the last one? I don't know. It was, yeah, it was last yeah. week. It was episode two. <laughs> episode two check out episode two because we talk about buy down and i personally just bought a house in this market with these high rates specifically for that reason well and there's you know the inventory is tight but there are still homes coming out on the market and so even though rates are high like you and i are talking about there are opportunities like you might be able to get into a home where 
you could get the buy down for your rate and lock yourself into like a really wonderful home. And granted, you might have to, you know, have a little bit higher of a payment for the first couple of years, but that doesn't mean that you cannot refinance later. So there are tools ahead of you. And that's why it's so important to work with people that can help educate you on your options, you know, and, and Keelan, you and I've talked about this, you know, our advice is going to change depending on like where we're at in the market, but making sure that you keep ahead of what is happening is going to help make sure that you're making a good decision. So yeah, the top of the industry, we always have the best possible strategy in the marketplace. There's pros and cons at all times and our strategies change as well. I mean, carry strategies change and how my strategies work on the financing side is going to change. And we work together uh, to get you the best possible strategy where we're at. So uh, it is important to be up to speed and not just fold back on the media who's scaring the heck out of everybody. You could be making a huge mistake right now. I think the market's going to bounce back in a big way. And I think if you wait, you're going to be costing yourself a lot more money. Right. I think, I think there's always, there's, you know, th there's always going to be a cost of waiting and yeah. whether you're losing out on appreciation or, you know, or whatnot. So, um, but if anybody's got any questions for Keelan and I, if you want to talk about, home buying right now or selling your house, please go ahead and give me a call. My phone number is 206-330-6985. And Keelan, if people want to reach out to you to ask you questions or talk about getting um, some financing for themselves, how would they get in touch with you? Call me on my cell. I'm open anytime. I'm happy to have conversations. As Carrie knows, I don't really work hours. I just work all the time and when needed. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, well, it's more like you work when I'm working, Keelan. Exactly. Like, like yeah, Carrie Ray's doing her thing on the weekend. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, but that's the business we're in. And, and the reality is the best in our business perform when it's needed. So uh, I digress. A good number to reach out to me, 206-321-4941. Give me a call anytime. There's no bad questions in mortgages, guys. Get that education because it's so important. Right. So, okay. Well, Akilan, I think that that's good for this week. And I love that we are getting to do this. So um, I look forward to talking to you again next week. Me too. Okay. Bye. All right. See ya.